Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise the King of Kings. A Lord of Lords. I'm from the Rock Intercessor Ministries. I'm here today to preach to you the word of Jesus Christ. Hope that some of you will give your light to Jesus Christ today. Amen. Today's message is life. Life. By the way, what is life? My dear friend, life is all about Jesus Christ. Yes, it is all about Jesus. And I want to tell you something. Jesus Christ is the only reason that we live. In fact, he came that we may have life. He said it in John 10.10. 10, I have come that you may have life. And that's the reason that I have life. And without Jesus, without him, there's no life. Without him, you don't have a life. Without Jesus Christ, we do not have a life. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have that life abundantly. If you do not have Jesus, you have no life. And so, most people today don't have life. They have existence. They are fighting to live. Why they are living to fight to live? For another day. They are drawing their bread from one salary to another. From one day to another. So they have existence. And they don't have life. And so, we got everything backwards about life. Now this world life, if you think about it, it is the way that we live. And the world live, if you can spell the world live backwards, what is it? It's spelled evil. So we got this thing backwards. So after you have lived, and if you live without Jesus Christ, like most of you today live without Jesus Christ, when your life is over, after you have lived, now, if you spell it backwards, what is it? Devil. So Jesus Christ come that you may have life. Satan has come that you, that he may love your life. That's what the Satan come, to rob that life from you. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the reason the Bible said the same thing in the book of John 10, 10. Friends, listen to me. We Christians, we Christians, we are not fools to be following our Lord Jesus Christ. Some people today might think we are, but we are not. You see, because if you live in your life today, and if you don't have Jesus Christ, if you are refusing Him, if you are rejecting Him, I want you to know today, my dear friend, you do not understand what life is. You see, because if you look into life, you got it backwards. And because you look into your life, you see it negatively. And because if you don't have Jesus Christ, my dear friend, there's no way you can have eternal life. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Somebody said, the youth is a blunder, manhood is a struggle, old age is a regret. That may be true. I only said this, if you don't know Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus Christ. Shakespeare said, life is a tale, being told by needle, full of sand, and the fury is driving nothing. I said only, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you don't know Jesus Christ, one university student said, life is a joke. And this is not even funny. I only said this, if you do not know Jesus Christ, if you don't know Jesus Christ, another, one, another student said, life is a disease for which only the cure is death. I said this, my dear friend, if you do not know Jesus Christ, if you do not know Jesus Christ. So you see, if you don't know Jesus Christ, like most of these people, they don't have faith in God. And these are the forces of what? Cynics. And then, Dr. Death said, religion is an internal spiritual world. I have my own God that is dead. Listen, my dear friend, Jesus Christ said, in the book of John 11 verse 25, I am the resurrection and life. That's what Jesus Christ said in the book of John 11 verse 25. 
I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, although he may die, he shall still live. Hallelujah. Amen, my dear friends. So you see, I could rather go with our Lord Jesus Christ than Dr. Dead or Shakespeare or those university students or anybody else who do not understand the meaning of life. Actually, if you study the Bible, there are seven meanings of the seven miracles in the Gospel of John. And these miracles is with a message. And it's, it's appropriate for me to use that miracle today to demonstrate to you what life is all about. Because I'm talking to you today about life. Now, if you see the signs with significance, message behind it, they are actually miracles, they are glorious miracles, and then in them, those miracles, there's a grace, there's a grace of message in them. And these miracles happen, but these miracles happen to teach us a greater lesson, to teach us a greater spiritual truth, to teach us a great internal spiritual truth. Now, miracle of raising Lazarus from death, Lazarus came back to life. Jesus Christ, raising Lazarus from death. Was it just to raise Lazarus from death? No, my dear friend, it's because Lazarus died later on, isn't it? What I want you to see, there's a meaning why Jesus Christ rose up Lazarus from death. And this gives us a representative of greater special truth of our internal life. What did he say? Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who lives in me, though he may die, he shall still live. And that's life, and that's the message, and that's the special truth, and that's the great truth, and that's the internal truth. The lessons of life that we need to do what to learn. In the life of Jesus is life. So, in other words, if you do not have Jesus Christ, you might therefore you have no life in you. Another place we saw Jesus Christ turning water into wine. Turning water into wine is a miracle. We saw that Jesus Christ is God's answer. God's answer to man's disappointment. The wines of this world run out. Jesus Christ gives us joy. Fullness of joy free and forever there's the lesson that we must learn from there that jesus christ is the answer for our needs my dear friend do you have any need in this life seek jesus christ he's a great provider now in another place jesus christ was healing the noble man's son the healing of the noble man's son is very good because why this is a place where this noble man had a difficulty believing our lord jesus christ and you have to listen to what jesus christ said to him Except you see signs and miracles, you will not believe. But Jesus Christ is the only God answer, God answer to man's disappointment. Jesus Christ is God's answer to man's doubt. And he gave this man a great lesson of spiritual truth, of faith. The lesson of life we need to learn. Jesus Christ is our healer. Amen? And then again, if you also look what Jesus Christ did when he hid the impotent man at the pool of Bethesda, the man was paralyzed. He could do anything. He couldn't do anything. But the Bible says Jesus Christ came and said to him, Rise and take up your mat and walk. Why was that miracle? It was to show us that the greater miracle that Jesus Christ is God's answer, God's answer to man's disability. Why? He's showing us that without him, we have no strength in us. Jesus Christ died for the ungodly. As a lesson for us that we must learn that our strength comes from God. And then again, we saw Jesus Christ as he feed the 5,000. He feed the 5,100 5, people. Women and children were not included. The miracle of feeding the 5,000. Was he doing it to show, to show off? Of course not. Amen. He did, he did that to show us that he is the answer to man's hunger. You see, because why? Jesus Christ said in the book of John 6 verse 35, I am the bread of the life. And who comes to me shall never hunger. 
and he who believes in me shall never test again and that's the lesson behind it that jesus christ is the bread of life so all these miracles are signs and a lesson for a life for us to learn and we must learn it because jesus christ is our provider and then jesus christ walk on water walking on water what was he doing again is it to show off no my dear friend of course not there's a lesson there the lesson there is that jesus christ walk on water the disciples were in storm and they thought the ship is going to about to sink but in their despair that shows us that jesus christ is our answer in our despair jesus christ is god's answer to man's despair the lesson of life that we need to learn that jesus christ is our hope amen and then again jesus christ opened the eyes of a blind man a man being born blind a blind man says this man was stumbling in darkness a man blind by birth needed a light and jesus christ opened his eyes why to show us that he can open the eyes of blind man of course not he did that to show us that god is the answer to man's darkness are you living in darkness today jesus christ is the light that you need to have so that you can move away from your darkness just Christ said this in the book of John 8 verse 12 I am the light of the world he who follows me now watch this shall not walk in darkness again but have the life but have the light of life so this there's a message in this miracle that Jesus Christ performed that and we must learn this today that Jesus Christ is the light of the world amen now the last of the seven miracles Jesus Christ raising Lazarus from dead this man called Lazarus did Jesus Christ raise everyone up from dead of course not but he did it in a way to show us that in the message that Jesus Christ is the answer to man's death amen it's a miraculous glory of God speak about the great miracles of grace now listen to me my dear friend there's a reason why I believe in miracles but I must trust in Jesus Christ amen don't put your faith in any person else except Jesus Christ. You see, I don't, I, I don't want you to put your faith only in miracles. I want you to put your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to learn this. And this is a wonderful uh, miracle, full of life, wonderful life, and abundantly life. Let me give you seven steps. And before coming here, I need and I pray to God that God will make your heart to be ready so that you can receive Jesus Christ today. And I believe that Holy Spirit is here. And I believe that the Word of God is here. And it's enough to save your soul, my dear friend. So I will give you some steps. Number one step, I must experience life in Christ Jesus. John chapter 11 verse 14. Jesus Christ told them plainly, Lazarus, has died he said but you see Lazarus had a king side problem that's a problem Lazarus had because he's dead Lazarus was wearing suit but he had a problem because he's dead Lazarus friends surrounded him but Lazarus had a problem because Lazarus is dead what am I saying here you see friend you might have all the nice friends that you have you might have everything in this life but Lazarus have one certain problem because he's dead. So you see here today, you might dress nice, you might speak nice, you might have good friends, you might have good uh, good earning, you might have good looks. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, my dear friend, you have one problem: you are spiritually dead and walking around. You see, so it doesn't matter what you have. If you do not have Jesus Christ, you are dead because a lot of people today hearing the word of God refuse to accept Jesus Christ. They are walking dead. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. It says that you are dead in your trespass and in your sin for not accepting Jesus Christ. The Bible says this in 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 6. She that lives in pressure is dead. Why she still lives? Are you listening? Do you hear that? she that lives in pressure is dead why she lives so here today in uk we have a lot of people today walking around who don't have jesus christ 
they are spiritually dead. The Bible says that if you're having pleasure outside from God, the Bible says you are dead in your trespass and in your sin. That's what Jesus Christ said. So today here in Stratford Center, you have a lot of them who are spiritually dead. Here in the city of London, we have a lot of them. In the city of Luton, we have a lot of them. City of Budapest, you have a lot of them. Bastona, all over this world that we are living. You have a lot of people today walking around, especially there because they don't have Jesus Christ in them. So the Bible says, why she had pressure, she is dead while she lives. So pretty much, if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, you have no life, my dear friend. You may have existence, but you have no life until you come to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You see? So these people, they're called dead, but you put it in this way. My mother, my father, they are dead, but today I'm living, but they're in heaven, walking around in the city of God, the sweet pink painted God, they're kicking the cold dust. But I'm here preaching to you. I want you to understand this. You might be living, but you are dead. And those who are dead in Christ, they are living. Because why? The Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. What does this mean? This means that if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, while you are still living, you are dead. But those who are dead, they give their life to Jesus Christ. They are alive right now in heaven. So you must understand this. And today I want you to believe that Jesus Christ said that he who believes in me, he who believes in me shall never die. Amen. And so many people today that who can call dead are not really dead. Talking about those who are already in heaven. Because they have eternal life. And we must understand this. And I hope today understand it because why? Many of us are still living here today. I'm talking about what Jesus Christ said. Are you listening? I want you to picture this. He said he is the life and resurrection. So that means in him, when you die, you have life but you are living today but you are alive but you are especially dead because if you don't have jesus christ in your life you my dear friend it doesn't matter how dressed you are it doesn't matter what you put on you are especially dead and walking around for not knowing jesus christ the bible said that he who lives in pressure or she who lives in pressure is dead while she lives but when you have a lord jesus christ you my dear friend you have eternal life you see because you have to understand what the Bible records. That Jesus Christ risen three people from dead in his ministry. If you remember by the little girl, she was asleep in the bedroom. Actually, she was dead. But Jesus Christ said she was asleep. And the most people, they're laughing to scorn. But Jesus Christ, what did he do? He shut the door, he shut them outside. And he just woke up the little girl. He says, sweetheart, wake up. And she was up. And she, she's alive again. The little precious girl came back to life. And then, what about another occasion? Jesus Christ was on his way towards a, it was a funeral. A young man was there, being carried along. He was there, and Jesus Christ said, Young man, wake up. And he came back from death. Then, the third time, the Bible records that Jesus Christ rose a dead man, Lazarus. He was being there too for four days. By the time of uh, purification, decay, corruption began. But Jesus Christ rolled away the stone. And this man's body began from decay and Jesus Christ bring him back from dead. I want to ask you a question today. And I want you to, to pay attention to this. The little girl and the young man, Lazarus. Why is it that Jesus Christ performed those miracles? Was he there to show off? Of course not. He want to show you, my dear friend. That once you are living, if you are in Christ Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter whether you are alive or dead. Apostle Paul said in life and death that he know that he is in Christ Jesus Christ. In that way, it's game for him. And but I can say the same thing to you today. Now that I'm alive and when I die, for me, I know where I'm going. In Christ Jesus Christ, he is the life and resurrection. And that's why I'm following him. So I have a I have a I have a mindset that anyone who comes back to life, I follow the person. And we know the only person who died and came back to life is Jesus Christ. And yet Jesus Christ performing these three miracles and getting the people who are dead back to life. So most of us today who are alive, 
but we don't have Jesus Christ in our life, we are spiritually dead. You see? So today I want you to look into your life and to ask yourself, because sometimes we can look at the people who don't know Jesus Christ, maybe the drunkard who is covered, who is covered with vomit, maybe a drug addict, maybe a pothead, maybe a prostitute, a gambler, a hooligan, and we say, look at them. But let me tell you something. You can dress well nice, Without Jesus, without Jesus, you are just dead. I repeat, you can dress nice. Without Jesus Christ in your life, you are dead. You see? So it doesn't matter if you haven't used a condom before. It doesn't matter if you haven't used drugs before. It doesn't matter if you haven't drink before. But in your life, no matter how holy you think you are, without Jesus Christ, you are dead, my dear friend. The Bible says, without Jesus Christ, we are dead in our trespass and in our sin. And I hope you understand this today. That any man or any woman need a life must come for our Lord Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, you have no life. You have existence, but still you have no life in you. So we must experience life in Christ Jesus. The lesson of life that we must learn. Without Jesus Christ, I have no life, and you, my dear friend, you have no life, and every one of us have no life without Jesus Christ. Now, how do we experience life in Christ? My friend, it is not by education, it is not by environment, it is not by experience, it is not by your good looks or good works or good earning, it is not by your emotions, it is not by your ambitions or your feelings. The answer in Jesus Christ Jesus Christ is the answer to man's disability. Jesus Christ is answer to man's hunger. Jesus Christ is answer to man's health. Jesus Christ is answer to man's test, testing. Jesus Christ is the answer to man's disappointment. So you see, my dear friend, for salvation does not come by learning the lesson from the life of Jesus Christ. Salvation comes by receiving the life of jesus christ and that life is from death of our lord jesus christ and that's the answer to a dead man and that's why jesus christ risen Lazarus from that grave by his word if you listen to what the bible says here in the book of john 11 verse 43 he cried out with a loud voice Lazarus came out no pleading no argument no hesitation no restriction he says Lazarus came out and the dead man came back to life the dead man came back to life. So how does he reason the dead man? Spiritually? How can you reason the dead man spiritually? It is the same way, my dear friend. Most of you today, you are working, but you are there spiritually. It is the same way that Jesus Christ risen Lazarus from death. By his word. That's why I come here today to preach to you the word of life. Today's message is life. And that life is in Christ Jesus. Remember what Jesus Christ said in the book of John? Since verse 63, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh, the flesh profit nothing. The word that I spoke to you, that I speak to you, are life and spirit. So the word of God that I'm speaking to you, just Christ said, are life and spirit. Now, how do we get born again? We get born again by the word of God. By the word of God, the word of God is life and powerful. That's what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The word of God is life and active. So the word of God is sharper than two double-edged sword. The word of God is spirit and life. Now, how to raise a dead man? It is by the word of God. And that's the lesson I want you to learn. And that's the reason the Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 16. We are to be holding fast to the word of life. That's the word of God. And we must explain life in Christ. And we must exercise the liberty through Christ. John chapter 11 verse 43. Jesus Christ said to Lazarus, come out. The Bible says in verse 44, the, the dead man came back to life. With his hand and his feet, we are striking, we are tightened with stripes. With his face wrapped with a cloth. Now Jesus Christ said to them, listen to this. Un uh, untie him and let him go. Untie him and let him go. The dead man is risen. 
he's free he has liberty he can walk he can speak he can see he has life and just quite say lose him and let him go now Lazarus at this stage is like most uh, Christians today they have been saved but they are not expressing a victory life you see they have been from Calvary to pardon but they are in between what I, what I mean here is this you have been saved but you haven't received the power of the Holy Spirit you haven't received the Pentecost power some of you today you have been punched down between Calvary and Pentecost you have life but you don't have not experienced the liberty now you may have seen Lazarus having dinner at some stage with our Lord Jesus Christ what I mean here is this he have life because now he's been risen now but his cloth is this thing with that thing order of death on him those grave cloths are a token from his own life why am i saying this you might know jesus christ and you are saved but still you have not received the pentecost power because why you are still having the same cloth that lazarus have when he came back from dead that means it's still on your old ways but you have to listen to what Lord Jesus Christ said. He said, take that off of him, unwrap him, lose him. Now watch this, he said, let him go. That's the lesson of life that we need to learn today. We must come to our Lord Jesus Christ, get rid of our old self, and then the word of God of our Lord Jesus Christ will tell you, in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit, you can go on now and do that what you've been called to do. Many of you today, this courage of coming to preach is because why? You are still having your own cloth. You are still having your own self. So listen, Jesus Christ did not just simply give life. Jesus Christ gave us life, abundantly life. You see, because why? That old cloth that was in Lazarus, Jesus Christ said, get rid of it. Let him lose. Unwrap him and let him go. Now, we know what the Bible says in the book of John 8, verse 32. God bless you, sister. You will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Again, in the same John, chapter 8, verse 36, just Christ said, if the Son of Man set you free, you will be free indeed. So you see, there's a problem I have here today, like many of us today. We are still wearing our grave, stinky cloth of old life. And yet, we are truly saved, but... We still love our old ways. We are lost in our old ways, in our own learning, our own lives. And because of this, we are still well in the clone of our own life. But Jesus Christ said, unwrap him. My dear friend, God wants to unwrap you today. God wants to loosen you today. God wants to set you free. And that's the reason, that's the reason why we are bringing the church to the street. So that many of you today can be losing from your old ways, from your own lives. From your own lives from your own ways of doing things from your own lifestyle that's why today by the way i'm from rocking taxes ministry that's why today i bring the message to you you see because why what is the ministry of a church number one is to call out the dead number two is to unwrap the saints number three is to experience life in christ jesus and we must exercise this liberty through jesus christ we must express the love of god amen we must express the love for Jesus Christ and we must enjoy our love for Jesus Christ. And then in John 12 verse, 11, uh, 12 verse 1, six days after the Passover, Jesus Christ therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus Christ had risen from death. Now notice what the Bible is going to tell us in verse 2. So they give him a dinner for him there. Martha served and Lazarus was there, one of those recycled with him, that Jesus Christ at the table. Don't you like to have that kind of life that you can come back from life and then you can sit down and have a dinner with our Lord Jesus Christ? That's the kind of life that I want to have, my dear friend. Liberty and now fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's gone from tube to the table. He's now sitting up there at the table. And that's a picture of you and me. On the last day. On the last day. Amen. On that last day, we're going to have 
encircled together on a table with our Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to have a good meal, my dear friend. And now, I want you to say, there's no more old cloth of the grave. Now he's face to face with our Lord Jesus Christ. Would you love to have a meal with our Lord Jesus Christ? Of course you would, my dear friend. Amen? I want to have that meal. Uh, by the way, that's the meal that we will have also. When we will have the uh, Holy Communion. I mean, we'll have a fellowship with him. And every time we have that Holy Communion on that table, we are having that meal with our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. And behold, I stand at the door and knock. It's knocking. And listen to this. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Don't you wonder, my dear friend? Of course you do wonder. That's why we are here. Jesus Christ says, knocking at the door of your heart. If you open the door, he will come in and eat with you. Amen? What a wonderful meal that will be. And that's why today I want you to give your heart to Jesus Christ. You see, because if you read the Bible, you will see so many times Jesus Christ is inviting his disciples to eat with him. Amen? Me and you one day will do what? Come and eat with him one day. It is, it is our duty to have fellowship with one another. It is our duty with our Lord Jesus Christ and for us to come and eat with him and to have a supper with him. So today I want you to see that Lazarus was sitting there at the table with our Lord Jesus Christ. And you see, salvation is not a penalty. Are you paying attention? Salvation is not a penalty that you pay in order to get to heaven. Listen, if there's no heaven, I will still love to be a Christian. If there's no heaven, I will still love to be a Christian. But there, there is a heaven. And I'm going there. And I'm telling you, my dear friend, I have made my reservations there already. Why? Because the Bible says he will have Jesus Christ has life. Has life. Past tense. Has life. Once you give your life to Jesus Christ today, the Bible says you have life immediately. Not tomorrow, not after. Right now. While you are still living, you have life. Amen? You have eternal life. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. So, to know Jesus Christ is enough for me. I don't know about you. Knowing Jesus Christ is enough for me. Knowing him and this is the lesson of life I want you to learn today. The message today is life, and we must learn this lesson of life. And we must know. And this brings me to the fourth point. The final thing, the fourth and the final thing I want you to know. I want you to understand. I must express loyalty to our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in the book of John, chapter 12, verse 9, the Bible said that when the last crowd um, of, of the Jews learned that Jesus Christ was there, they came. Now watch this. Not only on his account, but also to see last loss. Wound he have risen from death. Verse 10. So the sheep priest plans to pull Lazarus to death as well. Because of on his account, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. My dear friend, that's why we are here today, so that you can believe our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, here is a man with a life again. He has liberty, he has love. And now, God bless you, sir. And now he come. Recycle with our Lord Jesus Christ. And now expressing his reality and standing up for Jesus Christ. He was giving testimony for our Lord Jesus Christ. And now he's not dangerous to Satan's kingdom. What I mean here is this. People are getting saved by the testimony of Lazarus. And they're not coming to Jesus Christ. And they're not being saved. And more than that, more people are getting being risen from their spiritual death. And they're not coming. And that's the purpose. That is why many people are believing Jesus Christ. Because why? That miracle Jesus Christ performed upon the, life, upon the life of Lazarus is a sign to draw people closer to Jesus Christ. Amen? So my dear friend, if you have Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. But we know the Father says, they have lost the spirit of kindness in humanity and they're planning to kill Lazarus, to put him to death. But you have to understand that Lazarus is not intimidated by it at all. As a matter of fact, when you, when you die and come back to life, nothing fears anymore. You are, you are sitting down on the table with the altar and giver of life. He said, Jesus, he is the resurrection and life. So when you come to Jesus Christ, you have resurrection. When you die, you have life. 
So when you come to allow Jesus Christ, you must remove fear of death. You must remove fear of death. You see, because why? Satan is a sinister. He's the minister of fear. That's what Satan is. Satan is the minister of fear and the minister of misinformation. And the Bible tells us that through fear of death, he kills people bondage. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15. But now Lazarus is no longer afraid of death. He's not even afraid of anyone who's going to come and kill him. He knows now that he have life, and that life is our Lord Jesus Christ. So that means Lazarus has destroyed death. When you come to our Lord Jesus Christ, you are moving away from death to life. Death has no anything to do with you anymore. When we Christians, when we die, the Bible says we fall asleep. Do you know why? Because we are in heaven. The Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. So you see, Lazarus destroyed death already. Because why? He's not afraid of death anymore. Because why? He was, still, he was sitting down there on the table with the altar of life. Now, he's in heaven, by the way. Now, you see the brother Kinsley. No man is ready to live until he's no longer afraid to die. Let me say it again. No man is ready to live until he's not afraid to die. Because we can say, Lazarus lived. He wasn't afraid anymore to die. He was witness for Lord Jesus Christ. And why Jesus Christ gives us that life? In Christ Jesus, we have eternal life. We have abundant life. We have liberty, love, we have fellowship, and we must be loyal to our Lord Jesus Christ. And then, we are experiencing his life. And that's what Jesus Christ is talking about. When he said this in the book of John, verse 10, 10, 10, he said, I have come that you may have life, and have that life abundantly. Now, friends, as I bring message to close, here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line of the whole thing. Do you want life? You must give your life to Jesus Christ. Are you listening? You want life, you must give your life to Jesus Christ first. You must give your heart to Jesus Christ. You must love Jesus Christ and you must trust him. For he said, I am life. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and life. My dear friend, Jesus Christ is life. And if you have Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. Remember, bless in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Jesus Christ is Lord, my dear friend. Remember, bless in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. I, I, I could not somebody else because I don't know the area myself. I'm not.